I'm just setting it straight. I'm not no <laughs> Your daddy is. My daddy is a <laughs> Felicia. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Whoa, yeah, he is. He left whoa, me on the whoa. street. If you use Instagram Reels a lot, I'm sure you've seen some insane videos come across your feed, but I doubt you've seen anything like the video Starzy Rax posts. Oh my god, sir, are you okay? Are you okay? I need some pussy! He can be seen dancing with local streetwalkers, using them as props in his music videos. Bitch, drop that ass! Show What's up, G-Way? In the cut with my twin, we be vibing. And somehow, some way, this band has appeared on several major TV productions. For two years, Gabriella has loved her boyfriend Jonathan. But last year, Jonathan's ex girlfriend and the mother of his first child, Jordan, Facebooked Gabriella and revealed that she and Jonathan. Her man, we're still sleeping together. I've spent the last week scouring the internet for information about this guy's life, and some of the stuff I found out will truly leave you speechless. Starzy Rax, aka Jonathan Eden, is an American rapper that is most notably known for his role in the recent Could Have Been House reality series hosted by Drewski. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, I'm not. Take that piece off. Wow, Take that bro. I just, off. I swear to God. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. no. Yo, yo. I first came across Jonathan about a year ago while scrolling aimlessly through reels. The first video I saw was a classic Starzy Rax promo video. He was dancing with a seemingly run down older woman and had one of his rap songs blasting in the background. They were both having a great time in the video, but what stood out more than that was how bad the song was. At the time, I thought that might have been his strategy. Make a really bad rap song and it'll be so attention grabbing that people end up watching. But after a few hours of stalking his Instagram page, I came to the conclusion that he was not smart enough to come up with that, and that this persona he was portraying was actually real. Every video is made with the same style, older woman and a really bad rap song. I actually don't think you'll find a video on his Instagram with a woman under the age of 40. So these motherfuckers would talk again. Ramming in my cat. Roll my weed, wash my car, kiss my ass, I go so hard. Yeah. A large percent of people who are attracted to older people were missing a father or mother figure in their life growing up. And for Jonathan, his childhood could definitely play a large role in how he acts today. Jonathan was born on September 21st, 1986 in Orlando, Florida, which makes him 37 as of today. Jonathan left Florida and moved to the neighborhood of Algiers, Louisiana when he was just nine weeks old. Then shortly after, he and his family moved to Terrytown, Louisiana. The earliest Facebook page I can find from Jonathan has posts dating back to 2011. The bio of this account says he went to West Jefferson High School in Harvey, Louisiana. And another Facebook profile I found that belongs to Jonathan says he went to Live All Day Middle School. He didn't start posting his music online until the year 2018. And at first, it was exclusively on SoundCloud. Ice on my wrist like Sprite when I mix. Got four for the road. Four, five, let it blow. Go, go. Four, five, let it blow. Three, eight, let it show. Right, clean, that's a no. I see, I see, Mike, Mike. I see, I see, Mike, Mike. Got swag so clean, these girls want pipe. I'm a plumber, I'm a fitted, never been a babysitter, but I put my kids up in your car, it rub it, never saw. And then in 2019, he made his first music related post on a different Facebook page. Even five years ago, he was posting videos with his music playing over a speaker and an older woman on his lap. Not much is really known or documented about Jonathan. Since childhood, but I did come across one Reddit thread with alleged eyewitness stories about Starzy when he was between 16 to 17 years old, which would mean these events took place around 2002 to 2003. So here's a thread I was talking about. As you can see, the Reddit user Dax Mommy is claiming to have been friends with Jonathan or Jay as she refers to him. What she claims is that Jonathan did not have a father in his life, it was just his mom. And although she did not technically abandon him, she was more focused on her love life than she was raising Jonathan. Dax Mommy 
Tommy claims that Jonathan's mother would leave him alone for weeks at a time so that she could play house with her British lover, which left Jonathan to basically raise himself. And according to Dax's mommy, Jonathan was that one kid in school who always had friends come over to his house and spend the night, which makes sense because he was probably very lonely without anyone else in the house as a kid. Dax's mommy goes on to say that Jonathan even stole from his mother's British lover on several different occasions. The first time was when Jonathan allegedly stole the man's Rolex and then sold it to a local drug dealer. How does Dax's mommy know this? Well, she was there. She says that Jonathan picked her up and they were just hanging out like normal, but Jonathan said he had to make a stop at his friend's house to pick up some money. Upon entering the house, Dax's mommy quickly realized that his friend was more than likely a drug dealer and she didn't find out about the watch until after they had left. And keep in mind, during all of this, Jonathan was between 16 to 17 years old, so still a minor. The second incident of Jonathan allegedly stealing from his mother's rich boyfriend was for a much bigger sack of loot. This time, he stole the man's brand new Mercedes SUV. I'm assuming that because Jonathan was not 18 or older at the time, and the British guy didn't want to lose his sleeping buddy, he did not press any charges against Jonathan. Take these stories with a grain of salt though, because after all, this is just a random Reddit user. But I thought the facts they had, the way they describe certain events, and how it matches up to Jonathan's personality today, seemed like it'd be worth putting in the video. And on Facebook, Jonathan does say his dad is from Honduras and not living in the States currently, so that backs up the story of him being a single mom household kid. One of the earliest events that was documented online during Jonathan's young adult life was in the year 2013, when he was 27 years old. The movie Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters came out that same year, and surprisingly our friend Starzy Rax made a quick appearance in the film. I saw this online a while ago and thought it was probably just edited, but while making this video I went back and tried to find out if the clip was real or not. I found the movie that Jonathan was claiming to be a part of and skimmed through it until I got to the point in the movie that lined up with the clip from his Instagram. When I saw his face turn around and stare at me, I actually was blown away. How did this unknown rapper with little to no talent make it into a movie that did almost 200 million at the box office? With only a 90 million dollar budget, who did he know that could get him that spot? After some digging, I found the casting agency that handled hiring extras for the movie. I also figured out how it was possible for Starzy to get into this movie in the first place. It was much simpler than you might have imagined. He didn't have any special connection or friends in high places. The agency that handled the extras is named Glorioso Casting and is based out of Gretna, Louisiana, which is only 10 minutes away from Jonathan's hometown. The reason a movie of that size would use a small-time casting agency such as Glorioso is pretty obvious. The scene that Jonathan appeared in was filmed at an abandoned Six Flags in New Orleans, Louisiana, so really it was all just the right place and the right time for Jonathan and Glorioso Casting. On the Glorioso Casting website, they have a program where it seems like anyone can join. You just sign up, submit a resume and a headshot, and you're in. So Jonathan was wasn't even friends with anyone at this agency. He probably just signed up and was hired due to the fact that he lives in the area. On top of being in a Percy Jackson movie, Jonathan also appeared on The Maury Show three years later in the year 2016, when he was 30 years old. He was on this show because of a dispute with his baby mama named Jordan and his new girlfriend, Gabriella. Allegedly, Jonathan had cheated on Gabriella with Jordan for the entire duration of their relationship, and I think it's clear from the episode that Jonathan has always had a bit of a different taste in women compared to most people. I've never loved anybody the way I love my boyfriend, Jonathan. I thought what we had was special. I think he's been lying to me about being with a lot of other girls. Gabriella told the show that Jordan also has a three-month-old son on top of the other child. Jordan has a three-month-old son that she's claiming is her second child with Jonathan. Gabriella thinks Jonathan is the father to Jordan's new son, but Jonathan denied it at the time. All in all, the entire episode was a bunch of yelling with Jonathan giving hilarious looks to the camera every 30 seconds. If you're gonna cheat, at least go with something a little bit better. <laughs> He's also apparently proven to be the father of Jordan's newborn son. It also appeared that Gabrielle and Jonathan did not end on good terms. Hey, 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 Go Look, with your baby mama. I have a problem. I That's like to sleep with a lot of women. I'm sorry. That's I'm in love with you. you I'm in love with you, though. No. If you look at Jonathan's Facebook page, you will see he has almost 10 years of work experience at various different record labels. At first glance, all these labels look like small-time businesses run by local music enthusiasts. But once I actually researched these groups, one stood out way above the others. The label UNLV is actually a relatively well-known rap group out of New Orleans. And according to this video Starzy Rack shared to his Facebook, they actually acknowledge him as a member of the group back in March of 2018. As you can see in the video, the man clearly says, Starzy Racks, our new artist. Starzy Racks, our new artist, you hate me? 
the man speaking in the video looks to be the member named Lil Ya, and in the caption stars he put hashtag free tech 9 who is another member of UNLV that was released from prison in 2023 after doing six and a half years on an armed robbery charge. I didn't do too much digging into UNLV as a whole because, well, that's not what this video is about. But I did notice that they allegedly had some beef not too long ago with Birdman and Cash Money Records over their masters. So the group was doing well at one point in time, regardless of their notoriety today. The fact that Jonathan was able to be noticed by these people, never mind joining their group, is an accomplishment in itself. Jonathan's music is not very good, so I'm really not sure how on earth he was able to join this group. But nevertheless, he did. Throughout his whole internet career, Jonathan has had features in Canada cameos from people who were somewhat relevant in the southern USA rap scene, with features from people like Dubsky, Choppa Style, Sissy Nobby, Mr. Servon, and King, who has a feature with Lil Uzi Vert. I can only accredit this to being active in the NOLA rap scene and probably being active in the streets as well. There is literally no proof of Starzy being in the streets though whatsoever. It is 100% speculation based on subliminal messaging and social media posts. He loves to post videos of himself with UNLV rappers or other popular artists from his area. He seemed to be close with a few of them. But then again, he was also probably paying them to hang out and create songs or content, so that friendliness could be purely motivated by the money. As I mentioned, the man has virtually no criminal record, despite what he says in his rap songs. The only arrest I can find involving Jonathan took place in 2018 when Jonathan was 32 years old. He was arrested for unauthorized use of a movable and was sent to Nelson Coleman Correctional Center. Jonathan was taken on warrants for this crime, but I'm struggling to find any articles talking about guilty verdicts or prison in time. The warrants say that it was reported he borrowed a friend's car and did not return it. Although he was arrested, 2018 looks like it was a pretty productive year for Jonathan. He has several videos posted on his Facebook showing him performing at local shows, in the studio, and <laughs> dropping tons of new music to YouTube. Ever since late 2018, Jonathan has stayed very consistent with his music. I think nowadays he's even more active than usual due to the big feature he had on Drewski's show. Just touched down in LAX on a plane. You know what it is, Stars and Racks. We're here, we made it. Although Jonathan has kept consistent with his music, he has yet to have anything as big for his name than The Maury Show. That was until The Coulda Been House came along. I'm sleeping on the roof tonight. Drewski series has garnered millions of views since its launch on February 28th, 2024. And because of those views, Jonathan has gained a few thousand followers on Instagram and TikTok. Throughout the entire series, Jonathan did not seem like he really wanted to be there. He was relatively quiet compared to the other stars of the show. He would hang out in the back and not really talk to the camera. At one point, he wanted to leave the show because there were rumors going around that some people wanted to fight him. Oh, real quick, I don't know what happened with Stax. One of y'all bullied him or something. Who is that? The white boy. He's talking about he want to go home. Stars? Who did that? Instead of leaving, Trusky convinced Jonathan to stay by offering him private security guards that would keep him safe 24-7. He had a full night of sleep. He had protective custody in front of his door. Rax and those six will show you how a boss does things the real way. Basically was in protective custody. That became an ongoing joke of the show, and Drewski would refer to Jonathan as a rat because of it. But that's okay because Drewski loves rats. The most memorable thing about Jonathan's part of the Could Have Been House for me was when he rapped for Drewski in episode four. Honestly, the song he made in that episode was the best thing I've ever heard come out of his with mouth. Drewski. They singing that song like it's Tulsi. We all by the pool, like what is the move? The women who with us in two piece. Other than the Could Have Been House, House, there is nothing major going on in Jonathan's life. He's continuing to make music and post videos with GILFs dancing. Currently, he has 535 monthly listeners on Spotify, 21.6k followers on Instagram, 41.3k followers on TikTok, and 3.79k subs on YouTube. From those numbers, it's pretty easy to tell most people that follow Starzy Racks are here for his entertaining persona and not his music. Unlike a few years ago, Starzy has not had many big name features in his present times. In fact, his last feature was from Sissy Nobby and it happened on February 19th, 2022. For the last two years, he has not had a single feature with anybody who had some sort of relevance. I think the only reason he was picked to be on Could Have Been House was because he had a few viral videos and the guy is funny, whether he is trying to be or not. Jonathan still lives outside of New Orleans and as far as I know is not really seeing his kids, judging by his social media posts. On Instagram one day ago as of the day I recorded this video, he posted a picture of his daughter with the caption,
situation. I need my kids back. A pic of my daughter. Dad loves y'all. I'm doing things legit now. Thanks, Drewski, for making that possible. Which to me implies that he may not legally be allowed to see his kids, but that is pure speculation based on his own words. Back in November of 2023, he posted a picture on Facebook of what looks to be his two children, with the caption, If my kids aren't selling Zaza by the age 14, they're not mine. Hashtag Stars Iraqs, hashtag Nola, hashtag New Orleans. So I would assume when he says, I'm doing things legit now, he has changed his opinion on the whole selling Zaza by age 14 thing. I really believe that if Jonathan was in his children's life, he would be posting pictures of it, or even putting them in music videos. As far as relationships go, I highly doubt that he is still with Gabriella or Jordan, his baby mama. It seems like he's dating either one or multiple older women that he regular features in his music promo videos. He called one of them during a scene on Coulda Been House, whose voice I recognize from his more recent Instagram videos. His most up-to-date Facebook page also says in a relationship for his status, so do with that what you will. Personally, I am not a fan of Starzy Rax's music, but judging by the love he received from local rap groups, the shows he's done around Louisiana, and all the features he's had, I actually think that people from the South may enjoy this style of rap. A lot of comments on his social media pages are Southern people praising his songs, which makes me believe he may actually find success in this small niche down market. Let me know what you think of Starzy Rax and his music in the comments. I'm genuinely curious, even more so if you are from the South. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I love you. Have a good one. Peace.